Shalom, shalom, shalom. All praise, glory, honor belong to the true and living creator, the Holy One of Israel. For he is the king of the universe and the savior of the entire world. Let everything that have breath give him praise, glory, honor due to his holy name by saying hallelujah. We welcome you to the disciples of Yah. My name is Brother Elkanah bin Israel. We praise the Almighty tonight because we're in part two of the New Testament. Last week, we spoke of the New Testament of the Bible. The New Testament of the Bible, my people, is a book that the true and living creator does not speak in. That's right. See, when you read Deuteronomy the 8th chapter, the true and living creator lets us know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yah does man live. Now, no words proceeded from the creator's mouth in the New Testament. It's ironic that the New Testament was taught to us all the way back from the days of slavery. When they wanted the slaves to be in order, when they wanted the slaves to be more obedient to them, they made sure that they allowed the slaves to have a break on the first day of the week, not the Sabbath, but the first day, what you call Son's Day. This is the day that they allowed the slaves to rest so that he could hear the slave master preacher preach to him that all he had to do to be saved was to believe in Christ and that his blood was sufficient that you might be saved and as well as all the ends of the world and that he died for you and me that we might have everlasting life. But in reality, the slaves were being murdered and butchered and raped and castrated and hanged and burned to the stake, tarred and feathered by the same man who was professing this big lie. Told us that you didn't have to keep the laws and the commandments of the creator no more and that all you had to do was listen to him. So just going over and recollecting all of the past history concerning the first black preacher that taught us this, it went all the way back to the slaves. See, he taught us this, and now we're going by the same ways that he taught us. We never look back. We never look to see, was these the words that came from the mouth of the true and living creator? So therefore, you can see right now that the Almighty has put the liars on Front Street. That's right. If you turn your Bibles to the book of Jeremiah, if you have a Bible, if you woke tonight, I would encourage you to open your Bible. I know it sounds strange to have your Bible open late night because it's not morning yet. You look outside, it's still dark. Creator said he called the light day and the darkness he called night. So right now we're still in the night and you're watching a black man on TV speaking of the Holy Scriptures, speaking of the words of the true and living creator to his people as well as the entire world. And when I say his people, I'm speaking to the so-called African Americans. Those are my people, all black descendants of slaves those that are descendants of the people that were hanged and castrated and burned and lynched, tarred and felt and raped. That's why we got all these different shades of colors these days. Those are my people. But more important, did you know you're the Creator's chosen people? And the Creator prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, that all these things would happen unto us? It's 68 verses in that chapter, and I highly encourage you to read it because you're going to find out the reason why we're not being encouraged in his words is because of all the way back from the days of slavery. 
And when the preacher preached to us and allowed us to be off on the first day of the week, not the seventh day that Yah commanded that he blessed and sanctified, this is what the Creator is now prophesying in the last days that he was going to do to the ministers, the preachers, the pastors, the so-called priests and so-called reverends, all of the men that give themselves fancy titles to their, before their names because they want people to hide them and, or have them in high esteem, which Job said, oh, y'all, please don't let me be like that because as soon as I start having that type of respect for men and be given to flattering titles, soon you will take me away. So therefore, you must understand, my people. I, I'm just your brother. That's why I'm Brother Elkanah, Ben Israel. I'm your brother telling you what happened to us as a black people and why all of the philosophies and the religions, they haven't worked for us, even unto this very day. And we find in Jeremiah, the Almighty lets us know something about what he was going to do when he began to destroy Babylon, where we at today. And my people, that's why you have to read this chapter. In Jeremiah chapter 50, he actually prophesies of the very things that's going on, even unto this very day. See, for instance, this is what the Creator said he was going to do in the 36th verse of Jeremiah 50. A sword is upon the liars. And they shall dote. A sword is upon her mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. See, the liars, my people, are the preachers, the ministers, the so called bishops and reverends, and all of the men and women that give themselves these titles, that go around preaching that somebody died for your sins because this is one of the biggest lies known to man. This is one of the biggest scandals of falsehood ever been taught to the so-called African-Americans, which we are the children of Israel. So the Almighty, he's letting you know what they are. He said that he got a sword on the liars. And that's why you see the liars of all the deceit that they taught us from the slave plantations. The Almighty has it right in the eyes of all the world now. So many of these ministers that have been preaching to you that you have to listen to them because they're the new Levite in town. These ministers have done nothing but lie to you and got you on a path for hell. Because my people, if you don't turn back to the laws of the true and living creator, you're going to fail. And that's why Many of our people to this very day don't even know the Creator because they've been lied to. And the Almighty said he has a sword on the liars because he prophesied about the very place that he said we would be oppressed. Right here in this chapter, as a matter of fact. Just look up a couple of verses. Look what the Creator said in that verse 33 of Jeremiah 50. Thus said Yah of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. All that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. Their Redeemer is strong. Yah of hosts is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. That's what the Most High is doing now. That's what he's doing. He's letting you know in verse 35, a sword is upon the Chaldeans, said Yah, and upon the inhabitants of Babylon, and upon her princes, and upon her wise men. And of course, this simply means wise to do evil. Because you can imagine all of these things happening to this very country.
country where we are in oppression. The Almighty furthermore lets us know, as he let us know in the 37th verse, he speaks of the chariots. The word chariot in Hebrew means vehicles. And that's exactly what the Almighty has a sword on. All of the major vehicles that have been sold in this country, you must understand, this is the land of our oppression as Yah's people. And the Almighty told us, and he told the world, that every man shall reap what he has sown. And that's what's going on. And as you read in the 38th verse, he let you know a drought is upon her waters. That's how you're going to be able to identify Babylon. All of these swords and, and curses, what's going to happen to the place of pride, the place called the most proud by the most high. All of a sudden, it, it begins to dry. Look, if you don't believe me, Go upward even more. Go to verse 31. Behold, this is the greatest speaking. I am against you, O most proud, said Yah Elohim of hosts. For your day is come, the time that I will visit you, and the most proud shall stumble and fall, and none shall raise them up. And I will kindle a fire in his cities. And it shall devour all round about him. You must understand from the fires that's going on in this nation. From the drought unto his waters. The Almighty is bringing judgment. As he prophesied in the book of Genesis, the 15th chapter to the very nation that would afflict and oppress his chosen people. Go to the book of Genesis, the 15th chapter, and we're gonna go right back to this chapter. Go to Genesis 15. We're in part two of the New Testament. And right now we're speaking of some things that you're gonna be amazed only because we just never knew what the Almighty had to say. See, we still have the teachings that we received all the way back from slavery. Love your enemy. Pray for your enemy. Love them that despitefully use you and persecute you. So the persecutor and the user and the abuser in the New Testament, he don't have no rules. You got to be able to withstand his ways. Isn't that something? The creator said in Genesis, the 15th chapter, years, years, and many years ago to Abraham, our father, even before his name was changed to Abraham, Yah said it in the 13th verse, and he said to Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed, meaning his descendants, shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. And they shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterwards shall they come out with great substance. So in other words, the Almighty is prophesying that the nation that we were going to serve and be afflicted in as we are to this very day. You know, if just looking at that our brothers and sisters went and marched last week for rights that other nations of people can get, even illegals get more rights quicker than a black man. You have to understand, my people, what land you're in. This is the land of our captivity. And he pronounced 400 years. And he said, remember that nation whom you serve, he's going to judge. And he's doing it. Did you really believe the creator was going to sweep all the things that happened to the black man under the rug? 
Do you believe the creator don't know and remember all the lynchings and the hanging nooses to this very day, the rapes, the castrations, the discrimination, the exploitation, the subjugation to our nation? Do you really believe the creator don't see that, my people? Did you really believe that? They, the Most High see it, and the Almighty told us years ago, he said he was gonna judge the nation whom we would serve. And afterwards, shall you come out with reparations, great substance. They can have all the internet on wewontpay.com all day long, but the Almighty, as in the time when we were in Egypt, and the Egyptians gladly gave to our foreparents, the black Israelites, because all of them are black. See, that's what we never knew, because that's the world's best kept secret. And you're reading a prophecy given to Abram many years ago that his descendants would be servants for 400 years in a land that was not theirs. See, our people didn't serve and were afflicted for 400 years in the time they were in Egypt the first time. Understand, in Exodus 12, verse 40, it clearly lets you know that the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. All the way from the time in Exodus, the first chapter, when our father Joseph came with 70 souls with our father Jacob, and they lived there when Joseph was second in command, and they prospered, they grew, they waxed exceedingly mighty, and they multiplied. They were blessed because Joseph had favor in the eyes of the Pharaoh. And the affliction only began when Moses was a baby. You know, I know you've seen the movie, The Ten Commandments. Well, when you saw the movie, The Ten Commandments, even though, my people, you all you had to do was just read the words of Yah. They have been there all the time. He let you know that by the time Moses was a baby, that's when the new Pharaoh came in town. And guess what? The scriptures let us know that Moses went to Pharaoh to tell him by the word of Yah to let his people go when he was 80 years old. So you're only talking about less than 100 years of servitude and affliction. They were all blessed before that time. So therefore, Moses, he died at 120 years of age because he dwelt in the wilderness for 40 years with his people. 80 plus 40 is 120. My people, if we would have just paid close attention to the words of Yah, all of this would add up and it would make all the sense in the world that we have been lied to. So that's why when you go back to Jeremiah, the 50th chapter, you see the creator told us one day he was going to judge the liars and that's what he's doing because they've been spreading the biggest lie in mankind of today. Matter of fact, it's a Johnny come lately lie. There were 16 lies before JC or Christ or some of my brothers believe in Yahshua because every time the heathen have something, we want to always turn it black. So now some of our people, they're worshiping this Yahshua which the Creator ain't never talked about no Yahshua died for your sins, as well as J-E-S-U-S. -E Let's understand. Yah said a drought is upon the waters of Babylon where his people would be, modern Egypt. And you know, it's amazing. People, and especially they call governors and preachers and pastors and so-called reverence to pray for rain in Georgia, in Atlanta. And they were praying for rain. And it's amazing how, do you really believe that the Almighty hears 
the prayers of people who don't acknowledge his laws and his commandments? Why you think it's a drought to this very day? Why you think my people, the Almighty prophesied in the book of Zechariah that all the nations that would not come up in the future kingdom that's going to be set up in Jerusalem on Mount Sinai, or excuse me, Mount Zion, in the future, he said that all the nations that would not come up for the Feast of Tabernacles, something most of the churches don't even know about, they don't even teach about how we dwelled in booze when we came out of the first Egypt. Y'all said the nations that don't come up for the Feast of Tabernacles in the near future, he said, upon that nation shall be no rain. Letting you know, Yah has control of the rain, the hurricanes, the tornadoes, the thunderstorms, the lightning, the water, the air, the snow, the hail, and the fire. Yah has control of all of them. It's amazing. Most of the people be praying to some mother nature. But I notice when, as this place continues to dry up, I notice now they call it on G-O-D. Now they finally want to talk to the Almighty. But let me show you in the book of Proverbs, the 28th chapter, concerning those that don't know the Creator, that never even paid attention to His laws and His commandments, too busy being paid to preach that they're done away with. In Proverbs, the 28th chapter, you want to know why all these things are going on and being judged by people as well as the entire world that's listening to this message? I would encourage you, if you want to save yourselves, pay close attention to this. Proverbs 28, verse 9. This is what the Creator's Holy Scripture lets us know. He that turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Let me read that again. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, the commandments, even his prayer shall be an abomination. You know, it's amazing because they had already forecasted, quote unquote, that it was going to rain before it rained. They had already forecasted about almost a week ahead. Because that's what they do. In the morning, you get up and you see the weather people and the forecasters forecasting, guessing what the Creator is going to do. According to the meteorologists and all the studies that they've done for years. Because my people don't nobody know what y'all going to do. Nobody. And it's amazing that people and anyone would have the nerve to pray to the true and living creator and don't even acknowledge his commandments. I got to show you this one before we go into the New Testament or speaking of the New Testament, please go to Ecclesiastics and go to the bottom line of what the Creator made everybody for because some people commit suicide and they never really find out their purpose on earth. Where the Creator lets us know everything. There's a time for everything. There's a time for everything. That's wisdom to know that. But you got to know why do y'all allow men to either live from as a baby all the way to gray hair? Why do he allow people to even be born in the world. Did you know the answer is in his words? Here it is. The Creator told us in the 12th verse of Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, 
and further by these my son be admonished of making many books there is no end and much study is a weariness of the flesh and we can see out of all the years and tears that we've suffered as Yah's people we ought to know by now that these books like the New Testament and all these other books that people admire and read and study haven't helped us at all. The only books or scrolls in Hebrew that the Creator ever gave us was what man called the Old Testament. Isn't that something? Yah said in the 13th verse in his holy scriptures, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Elohim and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. This is why the creator made us. Why do he need any of us if we don't keep his commandments? What good are we to him? What good are we to the world? What good is it us to even have breath in our nostrils if we won't even do what he made us in the first place to be for in this world? Did you really believe the Creator just made many of our brothers and sisters to just prosper and rob and lie to our masses of our people so they can get rich, so they can go on vacations, so they can get a big bank account? Do you really believe that was the purpose of the Most High? Do you really believe that he wanted you, whether my people, that's in entertainment, or that's a, a professional athlete making millions of dollars, no matter what profession you're in, do you really believe the Creator made you just to make you rich? The creator made all of us to keep his commandments. Because this is the whole duty of man. And check this out. He said, for Elohim shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. There you have it. Yah's the judge. They lied to us. These liars preached from the New Testament and told us that the Creator don't even judge. So don't you judge nobody. At least you be judged. And Yah is the judge of the whole earth. And my people, let me warn you, just in case, and, that, and also the whole world that might be listening, don't you know what judgment day is about? Even the New Testament tell you, sin is the transgression of the law. That's what sin is. That's how it's defined. And my people... That's what the Creator is going to judge us for. Now the reason why many of our people don't know and they're blind to the truth is because we've been listening to these liars. Now let, let me go uh, further concerning the liars. Let's go to something that these preachers love to preach from. Let's go to Malachi, the third chapter. Let's, let's, let's get busy. Now let's go to Malachi, the third chapter of the Holy Scriptures, and let me show you how righteous the creed is. And at the same time, he's going to show you how the people use his words. He said in Malachi 3, verse 6, this is what the preachers preach to you. Well, not this verse, but this is what the Almighty starts off saying in the sixth verse. For I am Yah, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. So my people, I don't want you to be fooled and to think that the Creator has did away with his people, Jacob, the children of Israel, and now he done chose all the religions and all the philosophies of other people, and all of a sudden now he done done away with you. Y'all telling you right here, I am Yah, I change not. He said, therefore, you sons of Jacob are not done away with. You're not consumed. He said, even from the days of your fathers, you have gone away 
from mine ordinances and have not kept them, return unto me and I will return unto you, saith Yah of hosts. But you say, wherein shall you return? Will a man rob Elohim? That's the question. Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed you? And the Creator said, in tithes and offerings. You are cursed with the curse. I've heard these preachers preach this. Oh, you are cursed with a curse. They sang it because they can't wait to count your money before they leave that church. So they love to go to this one. They tell you all the laws and the commandments are done away with. But when it comes to them getting paid, I notice they go back and they grab Malachi 3 and they tell you, bring all the tithes in my house. They might as well say it because that's exactly the end result. When you get ready, they pass them plates around. That's the end result. They get in the tithe. It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, said Yah of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. My people, this is the truth. But what was ties for? That's what the masses of the people have never known. These preachers, they preach to you this and tell you to bring all the ties in the storehouse, but yet, do you know who ties are really for? For instance, let's go to the laws. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. And let's see what the words of the true and living Elohim have to say about the tithes and the offerings. Let's see. It states in Deuteronomy, the 14th chapter, the 28th verse. It lets you know. At the end of three years, you shall bring forth all the tithe of your increase the same year and shall lay it up inside or within your gates, meaning in your cities, in the cities where you live. You're to lay, and meaning store these tithes in your gates. And the Levite, because he has no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow, which are within your gates, shall come and shall eat and be satisfied that Yah, your Elohim, may bless thee in all the work of thy hand, which thou doest. The tithe was for the Levite that passed through your land because as it says in the 29th verse, he had no part, no inheritance with you. See the the priests, the sons of Levi, or the Levites, they had no part, no inheritance with the people. They didn't have crops and grains that they planted. Their whole works and life was dedicated and predicated on teaching the people the laws, the commandments, the statutes, the judgments, the precepts, the testimonies, the ordinances and covenants, and every precious word that proceeded from the mouth of the Most High, that man lives. That was their whole life. Now, here's the key. It says, and a stranger, that means a foreigner that would pass through your land that was hungry. He could actually come and eat because you had food as it says, that there may be meat in my house. That's why it says that in Malachi 3. And of course, you could have bind that food and crops together and turn it into money. 
But nevertheless, these are the recipients of tithes. Now, a Levite was not just any nationality of people. A Levite came from the tribe of Levi, one of the sons of Jacob, a black man with black children, which is us as the greatest chosen people. We are the descendants of these people. This is a heritage you're reading. This is not a fairy tale story you're reading in the, what man called the Old Testament. The creator never called his word old because the creator's words never get old. He said the grass withers and the flower faded, but the words of our Elohim shall stand forever. That's how long his words stand. Forever. His words is not like milk that sours and spoils after a week or two and you got to throw it away. His word is not like the grass that's green in the summer and begin to turn brown in the winter. His words is not like that. His words stand from generation unto generation. I'm speaking the same words that Moses spoke on Mount Sinai by the word of Yah to you tonight because his words stand forever. And I'm his witness that they do. So in other words, y'all don't change. He just let you know in Malachi 3, he said, I'm y'all, I change not. Tithes don't mean that they translate it now into bank accounts for preachers. That he might have him a wardrobe. That he might have him a bedlet. That he might have him a dome. That he might have him many vacations while you're suffering and broke. Because most of the people that furnish these preachers, these liars, with their goods, they're starving. They're suffering. Their cars can't even crank in some cases. And you can't even reach the preachers in many cases. But he would, when he get ready to rob you, all of a sudden, the Old Testament began to look good. See, you'll never see one remote suggestion in the New Testament of the Bible that even remotely tells you to pay tithes. As a matter of fact, the only few times you see the word tithes in the New Testament, it was being criticized by a Pharisee who Christ said in the book of Luke that paid tithes and that he was arrogant for doing it because according to the New Testament, the scribes and Pharisees sought in Moses' seat. That's what Christ said. Because they were teachers of the law. No matter if they kept it or not, Yah's laws are righteous. And they stand forever. And right here, these are the recipients of the tithes. Not your preachers that don't even remotely try to tell you to keep his commandments. Matter of fact, they tell you they're done away with. They were nailed to the cross. But when they get ready to cross over to your wallet and your purse, all of a sudden, these Old Testament laws that were given to a black people called Israel, they look good now. And they crossed over to different nationalities now. They're teaching it. They go and they teach from this book here. When they get ready to rob you, they go to here. But the tithes was for the Levite the foreigner that passed through your land when you was in Israel, the fatherless and the widow. Now, since we've been scattered to the four corners of the world, my people, we don't know what tribe we come from. So, therefore, the two main people that Yah wanted us to always remember and never forsake was the fatherless and the widow. For instance, Go to the law in the book of Exodus, and I'm going to show you something. That's right, Exodus, the 22nd chapter, and let's see what the true and the living creator had to say. Furthermore, this is what Yah said in Exodus 22. He told us in the 22nd verse, you shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If you afflict them in any wise and they cry at all to me, I will surely hear their cry. And, he, and they're crying 
They are crying while these preachers are lying and stealing your money right before your eyes and you can't see it. You can't see it. The fatherless and the widow were never to be forsaken. Yah said, he said, you shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. And there's plenty of them. Plenty of them. He said, if you afflict them in any wise and they cried all to me, I will surely hear their cry. And check this out. And my wrath shall wax hot and I will kill you. That's y'all talking. That's the creator talking. With the sword. And your wives shall be widows and your children fatherless. Every time I read that great law, I think about the widows of war. I think about just the widows of this war that's going on right now in Iraq. And wars that have went on that women have lost their husbands and children lost their dads. You mean to tell me that tithes was supposed to go to these people? And many of these women and children have just died and perished, went broke. Some of them, women had to sell their bodies because they couldn't get enough money. But the preachers have been pocketing the money that belonged to the widows and the fatherless. That's why the laws of the creator are important. Because my people, you're being robbed. You're being, the world is being robbed from these lying preachers. I won't go no further than that. But I'm going to tell you, it was meant for you to be woke tonight to look at this. That's what tithes and offerings were for. That people that were poor like the fatherless and the widows, they could receive these tithes because a, a man was supposed to lead his household in righteousness. And when something were to happen to that man and he died, y'all left on record of his laws that tithes was always to go to them. How many widows and fatherless children are out there listening right now. Or might not can't hear because they probably ain't got enough money because these preachers are living lavishly on that which belong to them. Think about it. Ask your preacher about this. Ask him. But you probably can't because in many cases you can't even contact these preachers. They're too busy spending your money. See, you got to understand, my people, even in the New Testament, it condemns them. I, I got to show you this. Uh, go to the book of 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, because people love to quote Paul. Now, I'm going to show you what Paul said about this, because I know many of you all say, well, uh, I can't keep the laws because I, I, I go and believe in what Paul said. Paul is now my new counselor. Well, let me see, have you ever seen this from Paul's lips? Those of you who believe in the New Testament. In 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, this is what Paul said. Paul said in the 16th verse, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yeah, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. And that's what these preachers and these so-called reverends and pastors and evangelists that Christianized most of Africa and colonized most of the world. That's what they've been preaching, the gospel. Well, let's see. For I, for if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, I, a dispensation of the gospel is committed to me, what is my reward then? 
verily, the word verily means truly, that when I preach the gospel, now check this out, they should preach about this. I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. This is Paul talking. The word, look up the word charge in your New Testament, in your concordance, Greek concordance. The word charge means without charging money, expense. That's the word it uses. Paul, without charge. The gospel of Christ. Ain't that what they're preaching all over the world? Christ shed his blood on the cross. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And no man gets to the Father except through Christ. Well, uh, Paul is telling all of the preachers that have been making their living off of the people that he felt that he would teach it willingly without charge. Because that's the way. This is the New Testament. This ain't no Old Testament now. This, this is the New Testament. You're reading it. That I abuse not my power in the gospel. So in other words, Paul is condemning all of the preachers and the so-called reverends that's been bank accounting your money that they have been abusing their powers. Many of you all ain't gonna listen to me if I was in the Holy Scripture, so now I'm gonna condemn you by your own words. These are the words they preached on the plantations, and they don't even go by. They don't even go by their own words. Now, if you think this is something, oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Now, most of the people say that you should be worshiping Christ. And he's the new savior in town. As if the creator is not the savior no more. And Yah told us emphatically in Isaiah the 43rd chapter, the 10th and 11th verse. I, even I, am Yah. And beside me, there is no savior. But nevertheless, I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of John. Now we're in the New Testament. Go to John 10. Let's go to John 10 chapter in the New Testament. Now these words are read because supposedly for those of you all who believe in Christ, this is what he's saying. John the 10th chapter, this is what Christ said. He said in the 10th verse, the thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I've heard that uh, many days. But you know what? I noticed they don't go no further than that. Them preachers don't go no further than that. Let's go further. Let's go to the next verse. Verse 11 of John 10. I, and this is in red, I am the good shepherd. This is what Christ said now. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Isn't that something? But he that is a hireling, hireling, H-I-R-E-L-I-N-G. You know what a hireling is, my people? That's somebody that get paid wages. A hireling. Somebody hires him. He said, but he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. That's what they do. And the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and cares not for the sheep. A hireling is a, a minister, a preacher, a so-called reverend, a bishop, a pastor, whatever you want to call him, is somebody to get paid to preach. This is Christ. He said, if you believe in him, he said, look, a hireling, he going to flee because he's not the good shepherd. He getting paid. And all you got to do is test to see if your preacher's a hireling. 
Now, how do you do that? See, let me tell you something. As the minister of the House of Israel of Atlanta, I, I don't get paid nothing. I don't even want people to pay me to preach the truth or the words of the true and living Elohim. I work like any man should. But these preachers don't have to work. They get, they get paid from you. The hirelings. Test your preacher and tell them you're not going to pay them no more. Just get the congregation together and tell them, say, look, I want to know if you're a hireling because we heard Christ told us that a hireling flees. See how long he'll be in that church preaching them lies over you. When you tell him you're not going to pay him no more, he's going to get his resume and he's going to go in who at another church. Lie at another church. See, the hireling flees. And just like it says right here, he sees the wolf coming, but he gonna lead the sheep. I gotta show you something. Let's go to Isaiah the 56th chapter because it, uh, even though I didn't really need to go to the New Testament to know it, but if you go to the book of Isaiah the 56th chapter, y'all let you know that these preachers are just hirelings. Y'all said in Isaiah the 56th chapter, because this is what they are. He said in the ninth verse, all you beasts of the field come to devour. Yeah, all you beasts in the forest. Because only a beast would take the money that belongs to the fatherless and the widows and spend it for himself. And as the creator said in Ezekiel the 34th chapter, he said, you clothe you with the wool, but you feed not the flock. Read uh, Ezekiel the 34th chapter, my people. Read it and pray on it and meditate on it and think about these ministers that have been feeding themselves and not the flocks. That's why the flocks just scatter. Because the creator is telling you in the 10th verse, speaking of Israel, speaking of the creator's people, Yah said his watchmen are blind. See, when you blind, my people, when you blind, you can't see. You can't even see to warn somebody when a wolf coming. They so blinded by your dollar bills, they ain't got time to look out for you. Y'all said his watchmen, Israel's watchmen are blind. His leaders, they can't see. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs that cannot even bark. You know, a dog, when he gets ready to bark, he's warning you that a burglar's coming. Somebody's going to get you. Like in Ezekiel, the third chapter, in Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter, when Yah said, I set you, Ezekiel, as a watchman to the house of Israel. He said, if you don't blow that horn and warn them from me, that I'm going to punish them for not keeping my Sabbath, which these preachers are not telling you. If you don't want them to tell them, if they don't stop eating them pork chops, that's killing them. Because I commanded them in the book of Deuteronomy, the 14th chapter, to go by my dietary laws and lead a swine alone, an animal that is breaking down your immune system because that's what it does. Pigs carry a poison. Y'all said these preachers don't warn you. They too busy cooking pork themselves and eating it. Y'all said they dumb dogs can't bark, sleeping, lying down, loving the slumber. He said, yeah, they are greedy dogs which can never get enough. They are shepherds they can't even understand. Lastly, Go to the book of Micah. Y'all let you know straight up in the book of Micah exactly as our time is running short. This is what the creator said in Micah, the third chapter, about the black ministers and leaders of our people, whom I love, my brothers, but it's time for us to change. Y'all said in the 11th verse, the heads thereof judge for reward. 
the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet shall they lean upon Yah and say, Is not Yah among us? No evil shall come upon us. That's why it's important, my people, that you understand you've been robbed, you've been pimped by these preachers. I know you all want to call me, so I'm going to give you my number, 770-603-6018. I know ministers want to probably tell me something because I'm about to hold up your money from coming in. 770-603-6018. You can call us right now. And on behalf of the entire House of Israel of Atlanta, y'all loves you and so do we. Shalom.